So Michelle, we all know you have the best tips, but Ooh. look, you can't possibly be everywhere to help everyone. That's where an authorized Disney vacation planner can be a lifesaver. And luckily for you, we just happen to know the best. That's Nate, of course, from Main Street and more travel. Oh yeah, Nate is the best. And with things changing at the parks, resorts, and of course the high seas all the time, it's so hard to keep up. Even for me. Well, that's not true. Yeah, but Nate is always right on top of every move Disney makes, so he can help you have the best vacation ever. Oh, for sure. If you're looking to visit Walt Disney World, Disneyland, sail the seas on Disney Cruise Line, or even explore anywhere in the world beyond Disney, our friend Nate from Main Street and More Travel can help make your vacation dreams come true. No question, sweetie. And if you've listened to our show for any time at all, you know we're big fans of high-end experiences. And that's just what you get when you work with Nate. He'll give you concierge-level vacation planning services, but at no additional cost to you or your family. Heck, you may even save money if discounts become available because Nate is always looking to make sure you get the best deal possible. And did we mention all of this comes at no extra cost to you? That's because it's Disney that pays Nate for all that top-notch service he provides so you don't have to. So if you're looking for the best person to plan your magical vacation, just go to DizTripsAndMore.com, fill out the form on the website to get the process rolling on your next fabulous trip with Nate. And be sure to tell him Tom and Michelle sent you. Well, hello again, and welcome to another episode of the Hyperion Adventures Podcast. I'm Tom. As always, I'm with my gorgeous, intelligent, extremely hardworking <laughs> Disney Thanksgiving light wife and co-host, Michelle. Yeah. Thank you, sweetie. Hi, everybody. So good to have you with us. Yes, this is Thanksgiving week, and we are very excited about it in our episode today. Well, at least the main part of our episode is going to be all about Thanksgiving. Yeah. Fun. <laughs> you, you okay over there? <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to get my... I, I ran my chair over my um, headphone cord, oh, so no. I had to readjust yes sorry about that see now if you only had a camera and can see the fun that we're oh, having gosh. <laughs> michelle is fidgeting in her chair trying to get her cord out from underneath it but we're good now right yes we're a-okay <laughs> we are good now so and we got off the rails extremely yes. quickly this week thank you michelle you're welcome anytime <laughs> What yes, I do. <laughs> yes, it is Thanksgiving week and we are very excited for it. So again, this week's episode, the main part of it is going to be all about Thanksgiving mm -hmm. and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun today. Yeah, and we're actually recording on a normal day for us. That's so. right. Pretty it's cool. Very rare. Yes. I have a day off on a Sunday. We are recording this on Sunday, November 20th, 2022. Yes, it is Thanksgiving week and mm -hmm. we hope you all are planning some wonderful times with your family, with your friends, um, whatever you may have planned. We hope it's full of food and fun and just an enjoyable holiday. Right. Just a lot of joy. A lot of joy. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of joy from you joining us today. Thank you for joining us today. In the future, you can find us most everywhere you get podcasts. However, the very best place to find us is on our own website, HyperionAdventuresPodcast.com. And while you're there... Sign up for our newsletter. Please sign up for the newsletter. Just a great way to be involved in the Hyperion Adventures podcast world. Michelle is doing such a great <laughs> job with the newsletter. We hope you're all enjoying it. Yeah. And let, let us know if there's anything else you'd like to see. For sure. For sure. Michelle will be on top of it, even though mm. she's already got that thing spiffy and yeah. running great. And uh, it's it's much better than when I was doing well, it. Well, I wouldn't That's say sure. that, but thank you. That is for sure. Uh, another way to be interactive with us is on social media. We're on Twitter, as long as Twitter still exists, <laughs> at Hyperion Podcast. If Twitter goes away, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest at Hyperion Adventures Podcast. If you are on Facebook, come on over and join us for some good, positive Disney energy fun on our Hyperion Adventurers Facebook group. Yeah, it's a great group. As we say every week, we are so happy that people are participating and sharing 
and just interacting in a very positive way. Yeah, just sharing their fun Disney adventures, their mm-hmm. fun life adventures, all about positive energy. And we love hearing from everybody there, whomever wants to share, or if you just want to sit there and just check out the, the, the stuff that's going on, that's fine as well. Exactly. Exactly. No. Uh, also, if we do have a YouTube channel, if you want to find us there, just do a quick search for Hyperion Adventures Podcast. Hit subscribe. You'll know whenever we have a new video. And if you ever want to contact us for any reason, please hit us up at our Gmail account, Hyperion Adventures Podcast at gmail.com. That's right. We love hearing from you. We do love hearing from you very much. And we loved hearing from people who sent in their Thanksgiving, Disney yes. Thanksgiving party guest list today. That's and we'll right. be going over some of those later awesome. on. Now, if you want to support this show and get some swag out of it, well, there are a couple great ways to do that. First is to go straight to our spread shirt shop where we have all sorts of different items with different logos. You know, the holiday season's coming. And we've got our Hyperion Adventures holiday logo there with a lot of great stuff. Uh, if you want to find us there, you can go to spreadshirt.com and just do a search for Hyperion Adventures podcast, or even easier, go to any of our social media accounts. On the profile page there, you'll find our link tree account. Go there, they'll have a link straight from there, right directly to our Spreadshirt shop. Yeah, and uh, hopefully you'll find some fun things there. Mm -hmm. There's lots of fun stuff, and there's fun stuff coming every single week. Deals coming every week, Mm -hmm. Uh, so please check it out. I wonder if we'll have some Black Friday deals going there for everybody who wants to shop for their entire family (laughs) on our Hyperion Adventure (laughs) stuff. Maybe. Yes, wouldn't it be a fun gift for your entire family (laughs) to get them a Real Men Love Frozen (laughs) t-shirt? I think that would be be the perfect Christmas gift. Sure, sure. (laughs) Or get matching holidays. PJs. That's right, for sure. All with the Hyperion Adventures podcast logo. That's right. Because we know the entire family loves us. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're just kidding, but there is lots of great stuff there, so please check it out. Uh, yes, we are very delusional. There's no question about that. Uh, another great way to be involved and help this show is to be a, become a Patreon member. Mm-hmm. All you got to do is go to patreon.com slash Hyperion Adventures podcast and find the tier that's right for you. We have tiers starting as low as $2 per month and you can get some swag out of it that way. And we appreciate everybody who's already become a member of the Patreon group, the Hyperion Adventures Patreon group. Yeah, it's very special to us. And, you know, you're really helping make sure that we can continue the podcast. So thank yes. you. Yes. Thank you so much for cutting some of our, helping us cut some of our costs for this show. I mean, I don't think we'll ever get to where we're breaking even or definitely not making a profit out of this show, but uh, anything we can do to kind of help curb the costs of putting this out every single week uh, is appreciated. So thank you so much, very much for that. So before we get into this week's show, you know, we always like to look back at the week that was because, you know, there's highs, there's lows, there's twists, there's turns, but we always like to focus on the positive here. So Mm -hmm. we like to find all our favorite thing from the week that was. And when we do this, well, we always start with Michelle because she's awesome, wonderful, (laughs) all things great in the world. Mm. You know, she does the best research. She has the best list. I'm sure you're about to hear one Mm. in just a little bit here. And he definitely has the best tips. And she almost always has the best, my favorite thing from this week. So Michelle, what was your favorite thing from this week? Well, my favorite thing was actually something I think historical that happened. And that was being able to watch... Um, the Artemis launch, very middle of the night <laughs> time. <frame>. Very <laughs> middle of the night. But um, being out, uh, you know, close to, you know, fairly close to the launch site, but able to be comfortable in my sister's condo and watching from the balcony how it took off, lit up the sky. Uh, it, you know, it was amazing. Yeah. Uh, so we did this and that w- it was also my favorite thing from this week as mm-hmm. well. Um, we went out to uh, your sister and brother-in-law have a condominium right, right on the beach in Indy Atlantic, uh, which is, you can see actually Canaveral right. from it, the, the lights from the towers and everything from it. It's not super close, right. but it's closer than where we live. We live on the space coast, but this is closer and a direct shot right over the ocean, the beach there uh, to this. So we went over there. Michelle was nice enough to, since I had to be up very, very early in the morning, (laughs) uh, nice enough to let me go to sleep and then wake me up about 15 minutes before launch time happened. And we went out and checked it out and it was spectacular right. i posted uh, we posted a video on social media it just it, it didn't do it justice um, mm-hmm, because right. 
when that rocket launched, it's the biggest rocket that's ever launched, yeah. uh, ever from uh, right. from any country in on Earth, uh, is the biggest launch. La, la, easy for me to say, rocket <laughs> that ever launched. Um, and it lit up the sky like you thought it was morning, like it was the sun rising. Yeah. That's how bright it yeah. was. Yeah, and, and how long it, uh, the way the trajectory of it went, that you could see it for a long time rather than just typically we see launches, they go straight up and then once they're in outer space, you don't see them anymore. This one kind of went more horizontally. Yeah, because it was so big and the rocket, the boosters were so large, um, it lit up the sky for much longer than mm-hmm. say when... Uh, some of the the Falcon, the um, the um, uh, SpaceX right. uh, rockets launch, which we see those fairly frequently right. here. Um, this was much bigger and much longer. And yeah, it's on its way now. I think it's only like a day or two away from get, getting to the right, moon, right. Uh, which is incredible. It's yeah. been so long since uh, you know we've been to the moon. Right. And uh, yeah, they're not, it's not landing on the moon, but it's going to uh, go uh, orbit it. And right. it's going to actually go... Uh, have the capsule go farther away from the Earth than any other uh, spaceship that is can hold men, can right. hold humans in right. it, uh, have has ever been from the Earth. So uh, that's exciting. All, yeah. of course, getting ready for, I think, the next flight, which is coming, um, I think it's in 2024, mm-hmm. which is actually going to have uh, humans right. in it and circle the moon. And then I think they're shooting for 2025 or around that time to actually land yeah. on mm-hmm. the moon again. So it's very, very exciting. Yeah. Uh, looking forward to how this progresses for right, sure. Right. So. And we're kind of space nuts here. Yeah. So it's kind of cool <laughs> to have this all going on. So yeah, um, that was that was great was my favorite thing as well cool yeah that's yeah. awesome another thing is uh we watched disenchanted yes. uh the other night and enjoyed that um still i don't know if it, it i wouldn't compare it as good as enchanted but maybe that's because i just love enchanted so much but it was interesting to kind of revisit some of those characters i thought the music was spectacular yeah. alan menken and mm-hmm. steven schwartz uh their music that they did for that was fun and fantastic right. and it was just a a fun little little movie to kind of add on to the Andalasian lore. Right, right. I really liked it a lot. I I was concerned I wouldn't like it because especially with the trailers and seeing, you know, the the lead character there, Giselle, getting evil. I thought, oh, I'm not going to like this, but I really did. Yeah, I, I thought you really it was, liked it. I really liked. Yeah, I think it. you liked really, it a little more than I did. Yeah. I, I enjoyed it, but I think you liked I, it more yeah, than I, I did. Yeah, I really liked it a lot. I loved it. Um, you know, and like you said, Alan Menken, um, with the the music, and and I was reading up how he actually um, was researching the Disney vaults of you know some of the very early Disney uh, animated films and how they compose music and things and tried to draw inspiration from those. So. Cool thought it was pretty neat yeah the usual just like in in enchanted the original film there right. was all these easter eggs to all these other yes. uh disney movies throughout it that were fun whenever you see one i'm looking forward to re-watching it and picking right. out more yeah. as you go through it but yeah it was a fun little movie i thought it was a decent sequel to the original yeah. again i love the original so much that it's tough to get onto that level right. but i did enjoy this and i like i said i think you enjoyed it more, yeah more than I, I, I did. yeah yeah i really thought it i thought it was pretty comparable to the first cool one, so there you go yeah. there you go so there's our little mini review yes. spoiler free review for you. <laughs> anyway let's go ahead and move on to this week's show we have lots of stuff for you this week including there's another way coming for you to sail the high seas with captains minnie and mickey mm-hmm. We'll tell you about that. We learned a few more details about Disney's affordable housing plan for the Florida area. That's interesting. We'll tell you about that. And we now know the reopening date for a popular Disneyland resort location. We'll have some more details on that as well. But enough about all that. Let's go ahead and get to our main topic of the week. So yes, it is Thanksgiving week. It's one of our favorite holidays of the year. Arguably, maybe my my favorite holiday of the year because I love food. Yeah. And I love to eat good food. Right. um, You, sir, make good food. Well, I like to cook good food Mm -hmm. and hopefully everybody enjoys that's going to be celebrating with us our food. But we were thinking about it and like, you know, hey, it's Thanksgiving. What would we do if we're like, let's just say fantasy world. We can invite our favorite Disney characters yeah. to be our guests 
at our Thanksgiving party. Right. Yeah. I thought, you know, we thought that would be kind of a fun approach, uh, you know, kind of looking at it. Maybe, I don't know how you approach it. Some, somewhat I looked at, you know, who would be like representative of family members, like an aunt or an mm, uncle or, interesting. you know, cousins and things like that. Interesting. Yeah. So, um, yeah, what we did is we decided that we were going to do this and just, just not go crazy with it. We were going to limit it to certain um, groupings. So we're going to pick one character from various different uh, Disney IP. So we have one character you can invite from Disney Animation, one that you can invite from Pixar, one that you can invite from Marvel, one that you can invite from Star Wars, and one that you can invite from Disney Live Action. And um, uh, yeah, I kind of thought of it in a couple ways. Um, and I do have in Michelle's a tribute to Michelle. I have two lists. <laughs> wow. Yes. Yes. Um, one is the one that's kind of the more thought out one of like, right. who, what were these roles? Why would they be invited? Uh -huh. And, you know, and then I did another one that is like a complete fanboy list of like, wow. if I can invite ones, I would just be sitting there going, <laughs> this is awesome. I can't believe they're here. <laughs> um, that's my other list. Very um, cool. So I'm going to kind of go through both of them here. But nice. the, I think the first one is the, the one that it really can the other one's just kind of a fun list. Gotcha. So, okay. Awesome. So let's go ahead and go with your list first, Michelle. I so are we going to go back and forth with each of them? Which the... would you prefer? Would you just rather go down your list and just complete your guest list and then I go through mine? Or would you rather us go back and forth like depending? Back and forth. Okay, let's do back and forth then. I didn't know how we'd approach this as we how would you like? always I'm do these things way. on the fly. <laughs> That's fine. We can do that. So I'll just copy yours, whatever you, uh, category you start with. I'll go with my category for that one as Ooh, well. Okay. So, so let's go ahead and we'll go ahead and start our ultimate Disney Thanksgiving party guest lists here. So Michelle, she always has the best lists. <laughs> let's hear who you're starting with. Um, gee, which genre do you want to go with you pick. first? You pick. All right. Um, I guess we'll start with um, Disney live action. Okay. And with that one, I selected Mary Poppins. Oh, you know, that's I, a good one. I thought about her. Yeah. yeah. To me, she was kind of like that fastidious aunt, you know, yeah. that you would have there. So, well, you know, obviously she'd make sure the table is set properly. Um, she could help influence the kids to actually assist mm -hmm. with setting things up. Uh, and she'd make cleanup really fun. Uh, and again, she could influence the kids to help with the cleanup. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> so a little multi-purpose yeah. there. I thought about her for the very same reasons you did. Yeah. So that, that's a good one. And uh, right. definitely was a possibility for me, but I went a different direction. Okay. And actually, I think she was on my list for a little bit until I thought about this one. And right. I mean, this is the ultimate Disney Thanksgiving party guest list. Right. So who would be the ultimate Disney guest? If you could pick someone from Disney live action. Well, of course, it's Walt Disney from Saving yes. Mr. Banks. <laughs> you got to have Walt true. there if you're going to do the ultimate Disney party. That is true. I mean, what else needs to be said? He is the ultimate Disney party guest. That is and, a good point. you know, also, even if you want to just say, okay, it's going to be the actor who portrayed him coming to your party. Right. Well, Tom Hanks is pretty That's good. That's true. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I went with Walt as Perfect. my live action choice. Ah, I love it. I love it. So. So. All right. What's next? Um. All right. I guess let's do Pixar. Okay. All right. Uh, so I, for Pixar, picked a Barley Lightfoot. Oh. You know, I, I just felt there's some quality about him that's familiar from to onward, me. From Onward, of course. Yeah. Right, from Onward, yeah. You know, I, I don't know if he reminds me somewhat of my brothers or whatever, but, you know, <laughs> let's say cousin. But anyways, um, I figured he'd be really outstanding at helping entertain the guests, you know. In fact, he, he could even make our celebration a quest, you <laughs> know, and really be fun. Um, and if you... You know, if space was an issue at the adult table, he probably would be able to handle his own by being moved to the kids table without any problem and any any fuss or muss from that. So, you know, all around fun, fun person to have yeah, at the feast. I like it. I like it. I think that's a great choice. Thank for you. Sure. Thank you. So I was thinking with more functionality for my Pixar okay. choice because... Ooh. Uh, you know, I, I was thinking, Hey, you know, the one thing about having any dinner party or any party in general is, man, I do not want to have to clean up afterwards. <laughs> yes. 
So I figured, hey, the perfect party guest to help you clean up afterwards right. is Wally from <laughs> Wally. Of course, he's going to want to help you clean up afterwards. Plus, he'd be just such a sweet person to have at your Thanksgiving that table. He's just a sweet little robot. Right. Um, I mean, he's going to be great. He's not going to eat all your food, but he will help you clean up afterwards. So I thought Wally would be the perfect choice for that. That is a good choice. I like it. I like it a lot. Very nice. Thanks. So moving on, what's next? Next. Um, I guess Marvel could be next. Okay. And I would say Thor. Oh. Um, yeah. Two words. Eye candy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't deny that. He is a good looking man. I know. He is a good looking man. <laughs> It'd be kind of like, you, you know, your sister's boyfriend that she invited to dinner with the family. Uh, but on the more practical side, he could help if there's a need for any heavy lifting. So. Yeah. You know he'd be jovial at the table. That is he'd just true. be having a good old time, drinking some mead or something, and yeah. just, just having some fun. I'm sure a lot of things that he would say would make a lot of people giggle under their breath <laughs> right. and stuff like that. So yeah, why not? Yeah, sure, I like it. <laughs> Thank That's you. That's a good choice. That's what good about choice. you from Marvel? From Marvel, I'm going to go with one that maybe is a little bit more off the beaten path, one you mm. might not think about right All to right. begin with from Marvel. And he's not really a superhero, but he is well entrenched within the Marvel Universe, both in television television and in film okay. and that is agent colson from Ooh, shield yeah I, I think he would never dominate the conversation right. at the table you know and he but he'd bring his good nature right to the table almost like almost like a father right you know? right he'd kind yeah. of be that kind of person at the table and i just kind of feel like if you get a couple glasses of wine in him <laughs> now maybe you just might break out some of these amazing shield stories true, you know you true. know sometime with him and nick fury <laughs> palling around or whatever. I just think that like, the stories would come uh, once you got uh, you know, a, a couple cocktails in. Yeah. Him. Oh, I love that choice. Wish I had thought of that. It's yeah. a good one. <laughs> You have a great, you have the great list well, this I'm time. I'm so sure. So, uh, so that we're part of the way through our ultimate Disney Thanksgiving party guest list. Michelle, yeah. who do you have next? Um, so next I have in Star Wars and I put Pelimoto. Oh. You know, mm. I. You know, <laughs> She'd be fun. She would be fun. Again, kind of the cousin or maybe the neighbor that you invite over. And, you know, like you said, fun. Um, you know that you can't take whatever she says too seriously, but you know she's got a big heart and she's sure to help the conversation at the table be very lively and fun. Um, and she might actually call out some people that you might be thinking of things <laughs> that you, you you feel a little hesitant to say, but I think she'd be bold enough to say them. <laughs> right. And if you don't know who Pelimato is, she is the uh, the character that kind of in the Mandalorian, right. when he goes to Tatooine and lands there, she's the character that kind of helps him uh, fix up uh, the ships that he, right. he yes. flies there. So yeah. and, and watches uh, Grogu. Yeah, I was gonna say takes for care of while. Grogu yeah. from time to time. Yeah. Um, and you know she she knows how she wants her meat cooked. You know she's not some <laughs> Rodian. Uh, you know That's right. not gonna be that raw turkey or whatever. So, um, so yeah, no, it's I, I think that's a great choice. She'd be fun. She'd be fun. She'd be if, fun. If, if everybody wanted to. You know, do some gambling afterwards. She'd be here with yeah, the cards. That's true. She's <laughs> kind of a card sharper for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. For sure. So Okay, what about your Star Wars pick? So guess? my Star Wars pick, well, I mean, it's got to be Chewbacca. I mean, <laughs> Chewbacca would be so fun. He'd be the life of the party, yucking it up with everybody. Right. Just so sweet and good-natured, big old guy there. <laughs> Plus, you know, after you're done eating, you know, once the tryptophan kicks in, the wine kicks in. Right. I mean... I've heard you'll never find a better place to have a nap than curled up on a Wookiee's lap. So, That's I mean, uh, it's right there for you. That's perfect. Uh, I love it. So, love I think uh, Chewbacca that would be the perfect sense. next Star Wars yeah, guest. Yeah, That's awesome. Yeah, very good, very good. And finally, wrapping up our ultimate Disney Thanksgiving party guest list, I guess we're at Disney Animation now. Michelle, who you got? Uh, I actually went very old school, traditional with that and one and picked Fairy Godmother. Oh, so, you know, uh, obviously she'd kind of fit the role of the sweet uh, grandmother of the group. But uh, also if, you know, there's some unfortunate thing that happened with the food or whatever, she could just wave her magic wand just and, make, things, yeah, and yeah. make everything better. And, 
you know, then you're back on track to the celebration. Yeah, she might be good for cleanup too. She that's can just bippity boppity boop the cleanup. That's yeah, true. Yeah. yeah. Although Merlin might be good for that one. That's true. Merlin he would could be cast a spell yeah. on like the dishes to wash themselves yeah. or whatever. Not but a bad choice. Yeah. Not yeah. A bad choice. So, so what about your animated? Well, for my Disney animated, now we, you know, we've taken a lot of roles here so far, but mm-hmm. we don't have the cook yet for the mm. food. And I thought about a lot of Disney cooks. Right. There are some great yeah. Disney cooks yep. out there, but I was thinking there needed to be an, an extra step here. And so I went with Julieta Madrigal oh. from Encanto uh-huh. because not only does she make great food, right. but her food has healing that's qualities. True. So anything that's ailing you going into that meal <laughs> as you're eating that food you're going to feel so much better afterwards. It's going to be great. She's going to bring some interesting stories about, you know, the Madrigal family, I'm sure. And then you're going to feel very healthy after you ate that. That's fabulous. What an excellent choice. Good deal. Good deal. I like it. One category that we did forget. What's that? Muppets. Muppets. Okay. Well, I kind of, put that into live action. Yeah, you know? I wasn't sure where to do it. So I did pick one for that. Okay, go to, ahead. You know, just to have something. And that was the Swedish chef. You oh, know, <laughs> yeah, that'd be fun. You could always He'd use be help fun. in the He'd kitchen. He'd be a mess. You would need somebody to bippity boppity boop that right? mess away. But he'd be fun. <laughs> So, anyways. Yeah, I mean, I think I thought about adding Kermit. Yeah, because you know, I love yeah. Kermit um, as being part of the party and as well for right. my live action. True, but I, true. I landed somewhere else when it was so, all said and done. All so, right. Very nice. So, so I'm looking forward to your other list. Okay. Uh, so this is just the fanboy list. It's yes. just like if they're at the party, this is scaring me. This is going to be so fun. <laughs> I'm going to love this so much. Uh, and so I'll just go down this list. I, um, I, 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 I know one. I'm sure is on your list. I don't think you do. Oh. I don't think you do. I, well, maybe you do, but probably not. Okay. Um, Disney animation. Right. It's Minnie Mouse. I mean, oh, who okay. doesn't love yeah. Minnie? Right. I mean, you got to have Minnie at the party. Absolutely. Um, totally. Um, for Pixar, I'm still going with Wally. Wally's my yes. favorite from Pixar. If right. he was there, I would just would be giddy. Right. Right, right, yes. There. Um, from Marvel, it's Steve Rogers, Captain America. Oh, yeah, you yeah. know, we're we are team cap here right. in this household. Yeah, I'm wearing my team cap leggings. That's right. So uh <laughs> that would be it. Uh and then for the next two, I went through a bunch of different characters Ooh. for both Star Wars and Disney live action. Um, there were, you know, I, I thought about for Star Wars, uh Soka Tano, mm-hmm. Luke Skywalker, right. you know, there were so many different sure. you know. But then I decided and when I figured out my Disney live action that this character, who's another one of my Star Wars favorites, like they had to be in the same room together. Okay. Because it would be amazing to watch <laughs> these two. And that is from Star Wars, Honda Onaka. Oh, yeah. And from Disney live action, Jack Sparrow. <laughs> Captain Jack Sparrow. Right. I need to see those two at the table together. Yes. Out trying to out pirate each right? other. Right? Exactly. You know, that... I just think it would be so entertaining. <laughs> that would be amazing. So totally that's why amazing. they ended up making my list. Yeah. I wonder if we can get uh, our conversation friends to kind of. Oh, Do yes. a little mock-up of that yes. for us. Hey, uh, Pat from Conversations, who yes. actually has his list on here too. We'll be giving that in a second. Um, we need to hear that. Yeah, what would that be like? Yes. Um, send us that because <laughs> we want to share that maybe on an upcoming show. That would be I want to so hear awesome. what that would be like. For yeah, sure. but great choices. So we did get some uh, lists from our listeners we out did. there. Uh, Michelle, why don't you start with the ones that you have there? All right. So starting with uh, Scott from Minnesota, he said, well... I'd have to start with the big mouse himself, Mickey, because duh. (laughs) True. (laughs) Of course. Yep. Uh, From Pixar, I'd invite Joy from Inside Out to be the life of the party. Mm -hmm. From Marvel, Mr. Doctor. It's strange. Who am I to judge? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Doctor Strange is my all time favorite. So he's definitely invited. From Star Wars, I would have to invite Obi-Wan Kenobi. Good choice. Yeah. Can you imagine the philosophical discussions between Doctor Strange and Obi-Wan? That's, that would be pretty that cool. That is true. That'd that be would interesting. Be cool. yeah. yeah. And from Disney live action, it wouldn't be super califragilistic good time without Mary Poppins. Oh, and all the food preparation by Remy and Tiana. Yep, a couple of other chefs that yes. I thought about for sure. Right, so, right. Yeah, that's a good list. Yeah, yeah. 
Should I go on? Go on. All right. So Jonathan in Oregon wrote in and he said, all right, I'm going with Rapunzel because she'd be kind and fun and set the tone for the room. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Giselle from Enchanted for the same reason. Agreed. Right. Remy to direct all of us cooking. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Baby Yoda because uh, Baby Yoda. (laughs) I know, right? Totally. Uh, And lastly, Rocket, because it's not a holiday get together unless there's at least one person making sarcastic comments and stirring a little bit of mischief up. Yes, that's that so perfect. true. That and is uh, true. Rocket from Guardians of the Galaxy, yeah, of course, would be great. Uh, the sarcastic comments yes, would be flying. That would be great. That would be great. That Look would us be great. all sitting here, <laughs> bunch of jackasses. <laughs> be perfect yeah uh and then we heard pat from conversations as you mentioned mentioned, yeah Yeah. uh from disney animated and pixar julieta madrigal and remy to make the food duh Mm -hmm. uh live action lumiere for the entertainment that's a live action lumiere of course that is also ewan mcgregor and we know (laughs) pat is a big obi-wan ewan mcgregor fan so that makes sense uh marvel steve rogers because why not yeah (laughs) Uh, Star Wars chopper <laughs> to entertainingly argue about why he won't serve or clean up. <laughs> he'd be the anti Wally. He would be the anti Wally. <laughs> he'd be great and he'd be hilarious. <laughs> he would be. A kind of tankerous droid. I could see him and Wally kind of having a fun interaction, actually. It <laughs> would be something for sure. For so, sure. Uh, moving on, we also got something from Charles from the Conversation Star ooh. Wars podcast as well. He said, for Disney animation, Chef Louie from The Little Mermaid to cook. Yeah. That's a good one. Le poisson. <laughs> uh, from Pixar, Wally to clean up. We're nice. thinking alike there, yeah. Charles. Um, from Star Wars, R2-D2 to serve drinks. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm, makes sense. Uh, from Marvel, Wolverine to carve the turkey and slice the ham. Yeah, that'd be handy to get those uh, those finger blades going. Yeah. Charles's dark side coming yes. through. <laughs> that dungeon sure. master. <laughs> and uh, from Disney live action, Herbie the Love Bug, so I don't have to drive after the food coma. <laughs> <laughs> and he said his theme is, I'm not doing anything to make it happen. So, <laughs> yes. Very good, Charles. That's a great list. That is a great list. Finally, from our favorite authorized Disney vacation planner, Nate, <laughs> uh, from Main Street and More Travel. He hit us up on Instagram. You can find him there and at most of his social media at It's Nate Bishop. He said, here's who I would invite to the Thanksgiving table. As of today, ask me tomorrow and it will definitely be different. First, the guest list would be Iron Man. For the obvious reasons, Woody Banner and he'll cook the turkey in seconds. (laughs) Next would be Han. uh, Han, Han. excuse me. (laughs) I'm sorry, my little Lando Calrissian (laughs) looking out there. Next would be Han. Uh, Could you imagine the conversation between Han and Tony? Priceless. Uh, To to ensure we have more than a repulsed cooked turkey... Uh, we have the to invite the chef of all chefs, Remy. Yeah. Yeah. Now that we have the food cover, we can fill out the rest of the guest list. Since we know the banter between Tony and Han will undoubtedly lead to heated moments, we have to invite Wreck-It Ralph to keep all the peace. <laughs> mm-hmm. And to cap it off, no holiday is complete without a tasty cocktail. Since we know he'll bring plenty of the good stuff, Jack Sparrow, please join us at the table. Nice. That's Captain Jack Sparrow. <laughs> I actually had Jack Sparrow on my list at one point. Yeah, yeah. I, I originally had him on my first list, and then I was like, "Oh no, Walt Disney has to be there." Right. You know? yeah. And then I—that's when I started. Like, I got it, and I wanted to get Hondo Anaka in there. Yeah. So that's why I decided I'm just going to do this fanboy list. And right. It'd be so funny. Um. So anyway. So yeah. I also came up with a few. Who would you not invite? Oh, who would you not invite? Yeah. Mm, let's hear who would you not invite, Michelle? Um, and just a couple here. I, I would say I would probably not invite Stitch. I just think the havoc <laughs> would be a little too much. Although I think he could be entertaining in some regards. I I'd love think... to see Stitch at somebody else's home right. yes. Thanksgiving <laughs> table because that would be hilarious yeah. if I didn't have to pick up afterwards. Yeah, and but, if you yeah. do that, have a TikTok video going on yeah. that one. Um. Anton Ego. I just think he'd be a little too critical of the dishes. Early Anton. Yes. At the end of uh, Ratatouille, Anton, I think I would be great guess, when he softens. But, yeah. Especially if Remy is cooking for him. True, but I think he might just make fun of the gravy or something like that. <laughs> 
Um, I wouldn't invite Mando because uh, uh, how rude. He'd never eat. He wouldn't remove his helmet. <laughs> Not in front of us anyway. No. Or he just lifted up just enough to barely see That's his mouth. That's true. I guess so. <laughs> I guess we could invite him. Uh, but, I, you know, it's funny. I, I do love Baby Yoda, but uh, my thought of Grogu is, would be more on the not to invite because I think he would kind of take over all the desserts and yeah. I don't I don't think we'd have enough for all our guests. You just eat all your eggs or all the frog. You want frogs. And no one <laughs> wants frogs at Thanksgiving. Yeah, you know? yeah. but so, he liked yeah. those uh, cookies. So I don't know. I think he has a sweet tooth. There you go. So, so. Maybe so. Maybe yeah. so. Yeah. So there you go. Who to invite and who not to invite, apparently. Right. Those are our ultimate Disney Thanksgiving guest list. We'd love to hear yours. Um, share them with us on social media. It's G- hit us up at the Gmail account, whatever. Let us know who would you invite to your Thanksgiving party, and we will share them on an upcoming show. Yeah. And I have a couple for Thanksgiving topics of just some little fun facts, oh, if you'd like please, those. yeah, share them. Okay. So, um, and this one you you may or may not know, but uh, who do you think was the first Disney balloon in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade? Was it Mickey Mouse? It was Mickey Mouse in 1934. Mm, wow. So, yeah. Very early, very right, early, right. Yeah. Kind of with my theme from last right, week. Right, the yeah. merchandising right. thing, yeah. Um, do you know who the first Star Wars character was in the Disney, uh, excuse me, in the Macy's Parade? Well, that was, was it uh, Grogu? You are correct. Yeah, it was Grogu. Just recently. Last yeah. year. Yeah. That's right. Um, and one other little fun fact of Thanksgiving and Disney. Uh, we all know that the president pardons turkeys every year for Thanksgiving. Well, in 2005 and 2009, the turkeys actually got to go to Disneyland and Walt Disney World Parks to serve as grand marshals in their <laughs> annual Thanksgiving parades. <laughs> Who had to drive them down Main Street, I don't know. USA? <laughs> Lucky <Wow>. turkeys, though. <laughs> We're gobbling right down the middle of Main Street, <laughs> there USA. There you go. <laughs> come on, come on. Perfect. Yes, thank you. Who knew you were so experienced? Yes. So talented. For sure. What a voice actor. Nobody. Nobody. <laughs> Nobody. But anyways. I love it. And I love the little fun facts from well, Michelle. thank you. Michelle always has the best fun oh. facts. So. <laughs> Anyway, we hope you have a fantastic Mm -hmm. Thanksgiving full of food, family, fun, and uh, hope it's safe, um, but just warm and embracing. And it's great for you. So excited for Thanksgiving. Can't wait to, to break out the food. I actually have the day off on Thanksgiving, yeah. which I don't have for Christmas, but I do have it for Thanksgiving. Right. And I'm excited to be with you and, and with Scott and, yeah. and sit down and just have a wonderful, wonderful meal in our new yes, Florida home. I know. Looking forward to mm-hmm. it. Looking forward to your yummy cooking. Yep, and... I get to start cooking tomorrow to get ready yes. for Thursday. <laughs> so, woohoo! <laughs> anyway, we hope you all have a wonderful Thanksgiving out there. Right. Let's go ahead and get to our Disney stories of the week. I do have a few for this, you this week. I was going to tell you all about how hey disneyland magic keys are for sale so you want to jump on that pretty quickly while they're for sale but in the meantime since they went on sale they've already sold out so i won't be telling you about that anymore um you can still renew if you do have a magic key um but yeah they they went pretty darn quickly yeah i mean well we've always talked about how in uh in california especially southern california that annual passes kind of rule the, mm-hmm. the you know the park so many locals the, right there's so many people within a two-hour driving exactly. distance exactly so you know and, it, and it's like with anything when you kind of have that supply and demand issue you know the fact that people have seen annual passes not be available once they are available they are going to pounce on them so um that kind of made sense but at least we know that you know there's there's hope for things you know mm-hmm. with the passes to get back on sale from time to time for sure for sure so. and we're waiting for the walt disney world passes to become back on sale here um unfortunately they raised the prices and yeah. you know and it's 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 a shame but uh and they said they weren't going to be putting them back out uh during this year but expect somewhere in early 2023 for right. uh, annual walt disney world passes to become available right. again you can renew right by the way you can you renew. can renew and if you had a child that was below age for an annual pass and you have an annual pass and they become of age to need a ticket then you can in those circumstances right. there um, you go 
purchase a new annual pass. Michelle's for them. tips, always the best <laughs> tips. I do have a Disneyland story for you. I'm going to start with that we now know the reopening date for a popular Disneyland resort location. Mm-hmm. This from the Disney Parks blog. They say it was Mickey Mouse and Minnie's Mouse's birthday on Friday. Happy birthday, Mickey and Minnie. Yeah. yeah. In honor of this special occasion, the Disneyland Resort announced the official reopening date of Mickey's Toontown in Disneyland Park. It will be March 8th of 2023. That's Very exciting. Cool. It yeah. is exciting. Mm-hmm. And with a bunch of new uh, little areas there to uh, entice you to go visit that little land once yeah. you can, once it reopens in March. Uh, it was this time last year that Disney first announced Mickey's Toontown would undergo an ambitious reimagining and reopen with some all new experiences for families and young children to have more opportunities to play together inside Disneyland Park. And here's a look at some of what you can expect when the land reopens on March 8th. Uh, the reimagined Mickey's Toontown will provide open grassy play spaces for everyone to unwind, starting with Centennial Park. <laughs> This first space uh, guests will see when they enter the land, Centennial Park will be anchored by two new interactive play experiences, a beautiful fountain featuring water tables designed for play that invite guests to have a sensory experience, plus a nearby dreaming tree with sculpted tree roots providing an opportunity for children to crawl and explore. That's the one thing. I mean, we were never huge Toontown um, fans, but that's because we hadn't gone in a long time with very young children. I think for young children to give them a place to just kind of you know, let off some energy and explore and have some fun while the parents maybe can sit and just relax for a little bit and watch them let off steam. Right. Yeah. Um, that's Toontown has always been great for that. And it looks like they're even, um, making it better. In the right. Future exactly. Here. Yeah. Yeah. Especially if, you know, like you said, you know, um, you could just need to run around. You don't, you know, feel like you want to run around you can feel it's yeah. a good environment for that right nice and yeah. safe spot for them to have a lot of fun a lot of interactive fun there and it looks like they're even making it more interactive uh with this uh progression with this reimagining coming up That's here awesome. uh, mickey's toontown will also be the home of the new attraction mickey and minnie's runaway railway of course that's already in uh disney's hollywood studios well now that's going to be at disneyland park uh it'll be inside the el capitoon theater <laughs> uh mickey's mickey and minnie's runaway railway will put you in the wacky and unpredictable cartoon world of mickey and minnie where you'll board a train with goofy as the engineer <laughs> One magical moment after the next leads you to a, on a zany, out of control adventure filled with surprising twists and turns, and that the entire family will enjoy. And this one actually opens earlier. It will happen on open on January twenty seventh, twenty twenty three. So that'll be open before Mickey's wow. Toontown actually opens. It's part of the kickoff nice. for the Disney one hundred celebration, uh, having um, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway there. And it's we've done it at Walt Disney World. It's spectacular. It's one of my favorite attractions. You're going to love it once you get to experience it out at Disneyland. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah, uh, for sure. Uh, Mickey, uh, also over in Goofy's neck of the woods, you'll find Goofy's How to Play Yard dedicated to all things play. Uh, Goofy's How to Play Yard incorporates a whimsical sound garden where kids will discover all uh, new ways to make wacky noises as well as enjoy an all new elevated clubhouse. And when you step into Goofy's house, you'll find a fun interactive candy making contraption that only Goofy could imagine. <laughs> the confectionery contraption begins high outside of Goofy's home and drips of, uh, as drips of honey fall from a beehive onto a chute that slides the colorful drops around and down into the home. From there, three uh, from there, junior candy makers will help Goofy make the candy and the silly sounds of household appliances will combine to make a truly goofy symphony. That sounds nice. a lot of fun. It does sound a lot of fun. And I always love the the how to theming of, of Goofy and I'm glad they're bringing it yeah. there. Yeah, makes sense because yeah. that's kind of his history thing, and yes. all the how to yeah. whatever right. things, all the different shorts. Um, that's going to be fun uh, addition to make yeah. this Toontown. Yes. Also, Donald's boat will be perched in the duck pond of the Goof Homestead. Imagine larger than life spinning water lilies, balance balance beams, and rocking toys at Donald's Duck Pond that will help little ones get the wiggles out. (laughs) This is a very important part of Toontown. Kids will definitely love making a splash in the space. You also can look into the boat through the portholes to witness bubbles of fun inside the flooded vessel (laughs) and interact with some familiar ducklings, including Huey, Dewey, Louie, and Webby. Nice. Yeah, so a a little ducktails involved in there too. Uh, For those wanting to get a little nutty, you can head over to Chippendale's Gadget Coaster where Mickey's Toontown's favorite tinkerer, Gadget Hack Wrench 
has created one of uh, one of a kind uh, fun size coaster for the town's tiniest citizens. I think that's the gadget coaster that's been there, just Ooh, reimagined slightly. Nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And at Mickey's house and Minnie's house, you'll once again be able to step right into their homes and enjoy a self-guided tour as you discover special surprises in every room. You may even be able to visit Mickey and Minnie while you're there, should they be at home. So that's cool. that is cool. Mm -hmm. And Roger Rabbit's cartoon spin will still be there, so you can step in right into (laughs) Toontown with him there as well. And when you feel a snack attack coming on, you'll be able to turn to two new places to appease your appetites in the land. Uh, Cafe Daisy, where acclaimed culinary expert Daisy Duck serves up diner classics at her sidewalk table eatery and the Toontown Farmer's Market at Good Boy uh, Grocers, a friendly roadside stand offering grab and go drinks and treats. So, yeah, yeah that, that's you know, it's one thing that Toontown was lacking. Yes. Was there was not really places to get food. there. Right. Exactly. Uh, so while you're there relaxing, you can also get a snack. Right. And enjoy the, that's awesome. the space. So yeah. That's, that's cool. I'm very happy like about those that. Changes. Yeah, looking forward to once we get back out to California, uh, seeing what right. uh, Mickey Mickey's Toontown is like as it's been reimagined. Right. Yeah. Sounds great. It does sound great for sure. So, moving on, there, there's another way coming for you to sail the high seas with Captain Mini, Captains Mini and mm-hmm. Mickey coming. Yeah, this was interesting news. It's yeah. been kind of rumored for a while. Well, they actually. Uh, made it a definite this week. Right. This, for, again, from the Disney Parks blog, they say Disney Cruise Line will soon bring the magic of a Disney vacation to new global destinations. That's because on Wednesday, Disney announced plans to complete the cruise ship previously known as the Global Dream in Wismar, Germany. The ship will be renamed with certain features reimagined under the world-renowned expertise of the Walt Disney Imagineers. So what the deal is with this ship is that it was a ship being built by a different cruise line uh, for the Asian market. And for whatever reason, um, they had to back out on that deal. Mm -hmm. But the ship was, I think, like three quarters of the way completed. Yeah. And so Disney stepped in, and I'm sure we will, I don't know, we'll probably never know the price of it, right. but I'm sure for a discounted price right. off of what it would have cost to build this huge ship, they stepped in and decided to, to pick up where this other company left off, and they're going to make it into a Disney ship. Right. And I think that's that's, that's that, awesome. That is awesome. You know, um, I think it's kind of a win-win, and it gets another cruise ship going out there ahead of time. And like you said, um, that could be situated for the Asian market. Um, I know that's something we've talked about with Disney Cruise Line that kind of has that need. I know that, you know, they've made the the cross around the globe to go to Australia, New Zealand, things like that. So this is an, an area that I think would be very popular. Yeah, I've been kind of thinking for a long time that one of the new Disney ships, whether it be the Treasure coming up here uh, or whatever, there's another ship that's scheduled to come too, Mm -hmm. um, whether one of those would be heading over to the Asian market. Since there are all the Asian parks over there, it kind of makes sense to add on to something like that. Um, But this looks like it's going to fill that void. Yeah, Uh, It's going to step in there and it's going to be a large, it's going to fill quite a large void because (laughs) it is a large ship. Uh, The new ship to be based outside the United States will feature innovative Disney Disney experiences along with the dazzling entertainment, world-class dining and legendary guest service that set Disney Cruise Line apart. The exterior will, will be adorned in the iconic Mickey Mouse inspired colors of the fleet. So yes, mm-hmm. it's going to still look like the other Disney Cruise Lines, right. only much, much larger <laughs> because this ship is 208,000 gross tons. Okay. So I think that the, I mean, it's either the, uh, the wish, I think is the wish is mm-hmm. like 144,000 wow. gross tons. So this is more than 60,000 gross wow. tons larger. It's like, you know, it, it's like a third larger yeah. than those, That's those ships. just incredible. Hard to believe. They expect that the passenger capacity will be approximately 6,000 with the pro- with about two, 2,300 crew members. Uh, construction will be completed at the uh, former MV Werften shipyard in Wismar, Germany, under the management of Meyer Werft. Yeah, uh, the Pappenberg based company that built, of course, the Disney Dream, the Fantasy, the Wish. Uh, more details about it will be coming in the next several years. I think yeah. they expect that it will be out sometime in 2024, yeah, I believe, I think, because it's mostly yeah. built now. Right. They just need to tweak it to Disney right. and finish it up. Yeah. So that's exciting. That is exciting. And I think they're, you know, th- they're going to draw a lot from one, the Asian market, market there, as well as 
from other countries who want to go to visit right. some of the Asian ports and things like that. So Yeah, and I saw some pictures from uh, what the original company that was building the ship had it mm-hmm. planned for. And there were a lot of the things that were going to be on the ship that seemed like D- Disney fans would love it oh, as well. Nice. So they may leave a lot of that stuff in there. Right. Um, and then just, you know, add the stuff that they want to specialize in. I'm sure that maybe the theater will be upgraded right. for Disney and yeah. some other things uh, about it. Uh, you know, the, the Imagineers will do a fantastic job. I have no doubt they've done it so far with sure. every single Disney ship to this point. Sure. I mean, th- these are probably not going to be your short three day, four day journeys, maybe more like yeah. the one week. I don't know. We'll see. It's but, going to be interesting, yeah. though. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, it might be something we include when we ever make it out to the Asian parks, you know. Right. Just to add, a, add a cruise in on whatever the name of this ship will be. It'll be interesting to ha- yes. find out what it'll be named. It's not going to be the Treasure. The Treasure is a different ship that right. they're building currently, or right. I think they're just about to set the start building. I don't know if they've started yet. But that will be uh, similar to, I think it's going to be similar to what the Wish is. Right, um, yeah, something like it. Yeah. Uh, so once they get that, that is going to be something different. Uh, it'd be interesting to see what the name of this ship is going to be. Ooh, and if yes. they're still following through with it, cause there was supposed to be another Disney cruise ship as well. Right. Uh, I don't know if this is going to take that spot right. or if they actually still go through and build another one, right. but we'll see right. what happens. Interesting news either way. Yeah. So. Uh, Moving on, we learned a few more details about Disney's affordable housing plan for the Florida area. Again, we go back to the Disney Parks blog. They said, earlier this year, we told you about our plans to contribute nearly 80 acres of land for a new affordable housing development. It's a project that has been near and dear to their hearts. As we know how important it is to find solutions to this important uh, challenge facing communities all around the country, including in Central Florida. And on Wednesday, they shared more details and provided a sneak peek as to what they, they've been working on. So there is some uh, concept artwork on mm-hmm. the Disney Parks blog for this. It looks like a great area. Yes. Uh, the development will be located in a spot west of State Road 429, just a few miles away from the Magic Kingdom, near schools and shopping, including Flamingo Crossings Town Center. Um, this is ro- like right yeah. just outside the park. We've stayed right. at a, an offside hotel right. at the Flamingo Crossings mm-hmm. area. It's a yeah. night, There's a lot of brand new shopping yes. and everything and some brand new hotels there as right. well. Um, it seems like it would be a great location. Sure, for something yeah, like this. A, lot of, a lot of great conveniences mm-hmm. for, for people that, living mm-hmm. there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the development is expected to include more than 1,300 units. Uh, they've chosen the Michaels organization to build, own, and operate the property. They said they are a prominent, quote, prominent and visionary developer known for creating high-quality homes in communities in many states including Florida, end quote. Uh, The development is expected to be privately financed and limited to applicants within a certain income range. So, you know, that's what Mm -hmm. they said, you know, affordable housing. Uh, They went on to say this initiative will help offer a viable solution to one of the nation's greatest challenges and will support and build upon Orange County's Housing for All Action Plan to address housing affordability for local residents, an action plan brought about by the passion and leadership of Mayor Jerry Demings. So Nice. Yeah. Uh, it looks great. Yeah. Um, interesting to hear more about it when right. it comes in. I think this is, uh, you know, for one thing, it's important for many people within the central Florida, right. but especially uh, some Disney cast members. Yeah. You know, yeah. It gives right. them some affordable housing uh, nearby Disney property. Sure. Sure. No, it's, it's a great uh, contribution to the community for, mm-hmm. sure, for definite. Sure. Definitely. Definitely. So uh, I only have one more note for you. Not really a Disney story, but something you should probably know is that the Disney has changed um, their uh, restaurant, their dining reservation details here. So it's something you need to know if you're going to Disneyland or if you're going to the Walt Disney World Resort. You can now cancel up to two hours before your reservation. So, uh, you know, it, it used to be 24 hours, right, right. 24 hours. It was the day before. It wasn't right. officially 24 <laughs> hours. But the day before your dining reservation, you had to cancel without a, some sort of penalty right. uh, attached to your card. Now you can do it up to two hours. So if, That's great. if, if plans change, which they often do, mm-hmm. You know, um, now you have that uh, option to you that you can cancel as long as you're two hours out without them charging a little fee to your card. Right. That's a great thing. A a great new change, I think, you know, because like you said, you know, you could just, you, you know, you have, especially if you're with a family or a large group and, you know, somebody isn't feeling too well or, you know, like you said, plans change, you decide, you know, you're staying at one of the parks that you weren't going to eat at. And now you got to like rally everybody over to the other location. That's, 
a nice convenience. Yeah. And it gives people who are on that standby, you know, wait list an opportunity. Right. So. And you, you make, you know, these some of these for these restaurants, the dining reservations super early. And then, right. you know, maybe you get there and you've decided, oh, I'm not, I don't really want to do that. I've gone to the Epcot, one of the Epcot festivals right. and had all this food. I'd rather do that. Something like that. It gives you other options. Now, there are a few things that are, um, aren't aren't a part of this, like the hoopty Doo review. A lot of the places that are more expensive, mm-hmm. you know, Victorian Alberts, mm-hmm. things like that, uh, you still right. have to cancel in advance for those, more, farther in advance right. for those. Uh, but for most of your, um, you know, table service restaurants, uh, this is in, in effect now. So that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. So that's it for the Disney stories of the week. Oh, Michelle has a, well, her mean, finger up. Yeah, she must I, have a Disney story <laughs> of the week. I don't know if it's necessarily a story per se, but so the day after Thanksgiving is Native American Heritage Day. Yes. And November is uh, Native American uh, Heritage Month. So there, you can do some celebration of, you know, the great contributions these cultures have made to our country's history. And you can do it Disney style. Mm -hmm. And uh, we actually, uh, in the newsletter, covered a few things. uh, But in our blog post, we have a little bit more of some really interesting uh, Disney fun and, you know, Disney's expansion of inclusion to uh, incorporate some things, which included dubbing some films into different Native American languages. So... Yeah, I came home from work the other day and Michelle's like, I got to play this for you. And she put on uh, Star Wars A New Hope. Right. And she's like, what language do you think this is? I'm like, I can't tell. I don't know. It doesn't sound, it sounds a little Asian. It sounds a little Russian. Right. I can't tell. What yeah, is it? It's really, yeah. And, and sometimes it's a little French. And, right. Yeah. You said it was Navajo, Navajo. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was fascinating. Yeah. 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 Interesting so, stuff. Um, there's several films that, that are, um, have been dubbed in different, uh, native language, uh, tongues. You can get that on Disney plus, uh, going to the extras page. Um, but also at the parks at Walt Disney world, there are some great locations where you can really learn to appreciate, um, again, the, the creative art and culture of those communities and, and how they impacted our country's development. And so go to the blog post at our website and you can, you know, capture some things that, you know, and again, when we're talking about the parks, we always like to look at ways to, if you go to the parks more often, things, little things that you don't really take the time to appreciate. Um, and this might be one time to really take the time to appreciate some of the Native American culture. Yeah, that's great. Uh, Michelle did a great blog post. Uh, she sent it to me to, uh, for me to check it out. And oh, she, uh, it was fantastic. Uh, so definitely HyperionAdventuresPodcast.com. Just go to our blogs and episodes tab. And it's right there. And you can check out everything that uh, is uh, Native American, Indigenous people uh, that you, you can check out that is around, uh, that, right. that it ties into Disney. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Good job. The Disney style. Of Disney style. Yes, yeah. very good. Nice. Thank you. Good job, Michelle. Speaking of Michelle, it's tips time. <laughs> and we all know, well, Michelle does the best list. You just heard it. You just also heard a little bit of her best research that she does. But she definitely has the best tip. So here it is, Michelle's tip of the week. <laughs> okay, I don't know if this is the best, but... Well, you know, we know, especially right now coming up in the holiday weekends, that the parks can really get packed, but other times of the year, too. Um, So if you're looking to have some fun activities outside the parks, uh, you might want to consider Sangria University. So (laughs) I I, want to enroll. I know, right? (laughs) I know. So this is at the uh, Coronado Resort. They they have it on Saturdays and Sundays only. It's about an hour and a half. Um, The price is fifty nine dollars, but that does include your tax and gratuity. Um, Guests twenty one and over can actually participate with the actual alcohol. So you'll get to try some that that they create, and then you get your hand at creating your own sangria. Um, If you have guests that are under 21, they can also participate. Um, They they do have to pay the full price. They won't get alcoholic beverages, but they'll get a flight of non-alcoholic beverages for the experience. So um, just another thing to do if you're feeling like, hey, I'm just um, fighting the crowds, or I just 
need to kind of get away from all of this and have something else. And, and, you know, going out to the Coronado resort is, it's just fun. There's, you know, it's huge. It's a great place to walk around and see, you know, the, the, the actual resort, all it has to offer. So it's kind of a, a nice outing that you could yeah. appreciate. Very good. I mean, yeah, I mean, we've mentioned it before and you, this is your point here. Uh, you know, when you get to the holiday season or the busy season, mm-hmm. any time of your any, it could be actually just a regular vacation. It can be very busy at the parks. Um, you know, it's good to find other ways to do things right. when you may not be able to just go attraction heavy or right, whatever, right. because there's so many uh, guests in town. Um, so other things that you can do, and this is, sounds like a, a wonderful experience. There's lots of stuff to right, explore, yes. lots of things to do uh, throughout all the resorts at the Walt Disney World right. um, Resort. Yeah. And during the holiday times, be sure to check those um, information boards at the resorts um, lobbies so that you can see what different well, you know, regular, uh, regular activities they do, but what additional things they have over the holidays. For sure. Good job. Two Michelle's tips. tip, two, always two the best tip, <laughs> for sure. Tips. Tips. Yes. So uh, my tip for this week, I'm going to go back to the dining reservation thing. And this is something we've talked about before, but now that uh, they've updated the dining mm-hmm. reservation thing, just wanted to go over it again a little bit. And it's like, because we all know how tough it can be to secure those advanced right. dining reservations. So just remember that if you don't land something like Space 220 mm-hmm. or Sci-Fi Dining right. or some of the more popular things, Be Our Guest, whatever it may be, keep checking back. Right. People cancel all the time. Plans shift. They, you know, especially since there's no penalty, right. people will book things and they'll either change things or cancel things. Right. So keep checking back and see what you can find. You never know. You might find that. Especially now, this is also something that if you, now that you know that there is a two hour window mm-hmm. to cancel, there's going to be a lot of people who don't know that, especially for the next few right. months that True. They, they'll be canceling a day before. Right. So check back, especially when you're like the day before, is there something you want right. to do when you're going to be in a park or a resort or whatever it may be. You may be a little bit, you need to be a little flexible on the time you're looking for, but a lot of times we've scored some oh, great yeah. things like Space 220, yeah, Space 220 yeah. the day before because people have canceled. We've shifted reservations. We've done lots of stuff. Right. People cancel when they're afraid they're going to get charged at yes. that moment. Now, this extends even onto the day of. Right. I mean, have other plans because there's no guarantee. But if you're in a park and there's that restaurant you want to go to, right. You know, keep looking back for a space 220 or whatever, because now up to two hours ahead of that reservation time, um, they could become available for you because people will be canceling. Right. And you can know, too, that if you did have a backup reservation, that you can cancel your reservation Mm -hmm. as well. Exactly. So that's good. Also, most of these uh, table service restaurants have some sort of walk up, Mm -hmm. which you can go up and either walk in and check in or you can check in right on the Walt Disney World, uh, My Disney Experience. App, app mm-hmm. or the Disneyland app. So do that too. And that's another option to right. get you in uh, to a lot of these restaurants or some of the lounges are just good enough. Like the Space 220 Lounge you're right. looks, uh, it, it's, it's, you're in the restaurant experiencing right. everything else. Everybody yeah. else is, you can order almost all the dishes that right. are on the main menu right there in the lounge. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that is something that you might want to take into account as well. So just keep checking back. Things become available all the time. Right. You just need to look for them. Yeah, that's right. Just just need to do a little work yes. sometimes. Keep your hopes. So, yep, exactly. So that's it for this week. Next week's show, we are still speculating on the topic. It's going to be something holiday related. I'm thinking maybe something along the lines of favorite Disney uh, holiday experiences or something along those lines. What are you thinking, Michelle? Yeah, I kind of thought there was something like that already on the We calendar. had two things on there again this week, oh, okay. you know, so we'll pick one of those or something, some sort of adaptation Flip of one of those things or... yeah, <laughs> and come up with something for you. So it's going to be a fun holiday uh, segment as we are definitely moving right in the midst of the holiday yes, season once we yeah, get we... Thanksgiving here this week. Right. Enlighten you all some of the fun things. Yep, if you for hadn't sure. thought of them already mm-hmm. or hadn't been aware of them. Yet. That's right. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And we appreciate that you joined us today. In the future, you can find us most everywhere you get podcasts. However, the very best place to find us is on our own website 
HyperionAdventuresPodcast.com. And while you're there, we'd love you to sign up for the newsletter. Please. We love you anyways, but yes. if, especially if you want to sign up for the newsletter, please sign up for the newsletter. It's just a great way to be involved in the Hyperion Adventures podcast world. Another great way is to follow us on social media. We're on Twitter oh no, <laughs> at Hyperion Podcast, Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest at Hyperion Adventures Podcast. If you are on Facebook, come on over and join us for some good, positive Disney energy fun on our Hyperion Adventurers Facebook group. Right. And... Uh, we just love the interaction of yep. that group. It is love a it, love it. fun, fun group. And yes. it's been growing. We've had some new members come in. Welcome yes. to all the new members that yes. have come in, yes. in the last uh, month or so. Um, and please invite some more friends yep. and family. Yep. We just It's just good, positive Disney energy. Fun. And yes. we love being on there with you all. Also, we are on YouTube. If you want to find us there, just do a quick search for Hyperion Adventures Podcast. Hit subscribe. You'll know wherever you have a new video. And if you ever want to contact us for any reason, please hit us up at our Gmail account, Hyperion Adventures Podcast at gmail.com. Right. And the other thing we always love to ask and remind you is we surely appreciate any feedback, whether you're sending it through Gmail or do a review, a five-star rating would be great. Um, but it just really helps us grow. Yes. It helps people. Others find this show. It helps us know how we're doing and right. what we can do better. That's a, the Gmail account is a great way. To, like if you have a topic idea, if there's something you like about the show you want to share, um, if there's something you think we could tweak and do better, um, we want to hear it. You right. know, as long as it's constructive criticism, we want to hear it so we can make this the best show possible. Exactly. Yes. So that's it. Thanks for listening to another episode of the Hyperion Adventures podcast. We look forward to sharing some time with you again next week. Until that time, I'm Tom. I'm Michelle. And we hope that you have a magical week. Bye.